Former Prime Minister Imran Khan appeared before a live member bench of the Supreme Court, his first court appearance in months. The bench was hearing the government's appeal against the Supreme Court's decision to nullify amendments to the NAB laws. This was the first time the PTI founder appeared before a bench led by Chief Justice Qazi Faiz Isa. Justice Isa had faced a presidential reference during the PTI GERB. Imran Khan appeared via video link from Rawalpindi's Adiala Jail, where he is currently being held. The court had approved his plea to present arguments himself, but the hearing was adjourned today before his turn. The bench heard arguments from the Attorney General and the government's counsel before adjourning proceedings for an indefinite period. The Supreme Court administration has launched a probe to find out who leaked an image of PTI founder Imran Khan from the court. The photo was released on social media showing Imran in a light blue shirt attending the hearing via video link. The PTI also shared the picture on its social media. Sources say the police will review CCTV footage and take action against the culprit as this was a violation of courtroom rules. The investigation was ordered after the Supreme Court decided not to live stream proceedings for the day. The PTI had called for authorities to resume the live broadcast. Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif travelled to Azad Jammu and Kashmir to meet the political leadership and address the members of the AJK cabinet. This was his first visit to the region after violent protests over high electricity tariffs and wheat prices rocked the region. Presiding over the cabinet meeting, Shabaz assured that his government would work with the AJK leadership to seek a permanent solution to the issues of the Kashmiri people. The Prime Minister asked his AJK counterpart to establish a committee for essential consultations with Pakistani ministries on multiple issues. He expressed condolences over the death of civilians and police personnel during the protests. He also announced support for the grieved families under the Shuhada package. The Prime Minister emphasized that he has effectively raised the Kashmir issue at different international forums. The Islamabad High Court has responded to a letter from a senator raising the issue of dual nationality of judges. Responding to Senator Faisal Wada's letter, the court said that details about citizenship not sought from lawyers being considered for the position of High Court judge. It clarified that holding citizenship or residence of another country does not bar a lawyer from becoming a judge. Wauda had written a letter to the IHC in April asking why a judge could have dual citizenship when assembly members cannot. He had demanded that the Supreme Judicial Council intervene in the matter. The Met Office has forecast very hot weather for the southern and central parts of Pakistan for today. Karachi is also set to experience scorching weather with temperatures predicted to reach to 39 Celsius and 79% humidity. It comes a day after temperatures surged to the season's record highs in Sindh province. Pakistan's stock market stabilized on Thursday evening after slight dip during intraday trading. The benchmark 100 index closed the day at 74,930 points, gaining 266 points during the day after an earlier dip. The benchmark 100 index had reached an all-time high a day earlier. The government's push for privatization, the return of foreign investors, and other positive data on manufacturing output has fueled investor optimism. The Pakistan cricket team reached England on Wednesday after playing a three-match series against Ireland, which they won 2-1 following their dominant performance in the last two T20Is. The Pakistani team, under the leadership of Babar Azam, will play a four-match T20I series against England from May 22nd to 30th, which would be the last outing before the commencement of the T20 World Cup 2024. France declared a state of emergency in New Caledonia following deadly riots sparked by electoral reforms, resulting in the deaths of three indigenous Kanak and a police official. The emergency measures, effective for 12 days, allow for the banning of gatherings and restrict movement on the island. The unrest began after a new bill was passed in Paris, enabling French residents living in New Caledonia for 10 years to vote in provincial elections, a move feared to undermine the Kanak vote. In response to the violence, 500 police officers were deployed to the island, schools were closed, and a curfew was imposed in the capital. Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico is stable, but his condition remains very serious after an assassination attempt on Wednesday. The 59-year-old was shot five times while meeting supporters in the central town of Hanlova. He underwent several hours of emergency surgery and was in critical condition. Deputy Prime Minister Robert Kalinak said Robert Fico is not out of danger yet. His condition stabilized after surgery, but his injuries are still complicated and serious. Slovak media reported that the alleged attacker, a 71-year-old writer, has been charged with attempted murder. The International Court of Justice is set to hear South Africa's call to stop Israel's invasion of Rafah, which it describes as a genocidal operation threatening the very survival of Palestinians. South Africa's top lawyers will argue that the ICJ should order an immediate ceasefire throughout Gaza, citing the court's previous ruling in January 
that Israel must prevent genocidal acts and enable humanitarian aid to Gaza. The ICJ earlier stopped short of ordering a ceasefire and South Africa is arguing that the situation on the ground requires fresh action. The Rafah operation has displaced an additional 600,000 Palestinians and South Africa claims that Israel's actions are themselves genocidal. South Africa is urging the ICJ to order Israel to stop its invasion of Rafah and elsewhere in Gaza, citing the overwhelming evidence of the harm caused to Palestinians that includes 35,000 fatalities caused by Israel. Five Israeli soldiers have been killed in the northern Gaza Strip when they were struck by fire from Israeli tanks. The Israeli military said the incident was caused by friendly fire from a tank and that it is carrying out further investigation. The deaths bring the number of Israeli soldiers killed since the start of the onslaught on Gaza to 626. Meta Platforms has distorted Facebook posts by Malaysian media covering Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's meeting with the Hamas leader. Anwar had met Ismail Hani of Hamas in Qatar on Monday. Malaysia's government had sent a letter to Meta asking for an explanation after the posts were removed. It also inquired about the closure of a Facebook account belonging to a media outlet that covers Palestinian issues. The removal of the posts drew complaints from Malaysia's government which warned of firm action against Meta and other social media companies. Meta claimed the posts were removed in error. The NFL has released its 2024 schedule with the 18-week 272-game season kicking off on September 5th. Key games of the schedule include the Kansas City Chiefs hosting the Baltimore Ravens in a rematch of the AFC Championship game. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles and Green Bay Packers will play the first-ever NFL game in South America on September 6. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles and Green Bay Packers will play the first ever NFL game in South America on September 6. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are reportedly on the brink of divorce, less than two years after tying the knot. A source close to the couple revealed to In Touch that they just couldn't make it work, signaling an end to their rekindled romance. This development follows reports that Affleck has already moved out of their shared $60 million home, with Lopez spotting house hunting in Beverly Hills alone. According to the insider, Affleck is now prioritizing his work and his kids as the couple faces the reality of selling their dream home, a property they spent two years searching for.